everyone is Jono here today I'll be doing a tutorial on my still not mine remix just to break down everything I did if you don't know what this track is it's originally written by Brito and Anna Mary Rosanio they both did great on the original track and provided a really great foundation for this remix so huge shout out to them but if you haven't listened to the remix yet I'll put a link to the Spotify and also SoundCloud in the description below so you have a better idea of what I'm going to talk about but without further ado, let's dive right into it. So here's the intro as well as the first. Wait on my by the phone. Yours is when we're alone. Somehow still can't let go. Learn to put on a smile. Keep your own for a while. No, you leave me stay. As you can hear, it's really simple arrangement wise, which is why I use tons of delays and other like reverb effects on my vocals, as well as like delay throws, just to create a more spacious effect for the entire verse, because there's not much going on. I won't be diving too in depth for my vocal processing, because it's way too complex and it will make this video way too long. So just to keep everything short, I will mostly talk about the instrumental part, which is what most of you people are here for anyway. But with that said, let's talk about the instruments. The most important part in the first is actually this pad. If I solo all the instruments. Simply taking out the pad already made it sound 10 times worse. Um, so let's talk about uh, the pad first. It's actually the exact same method I used for the pads in my Aries Conversation Remix. So here I used the original focal stems and I put tons of reverb on it. So for the top one is the original focals. For the second one is the duplicate of that, but I pitched it up an octave. So here's what they sound like. As you can hear, it's just a wall of sound. You almost can't tell it's the original vocals, but it's gonna get crazier, so stick with me. I added another layer of synth pad below and a reese bass, so together they sound something like this. It still doesn't sound quite like uh, the end result yet, because what happens next is the secret sauce. I resampled what I just made and I threw it into a granulator. So what happens now is that I simply play with the file position and you can create these really amazing sound impacts. And after that I simply resampled my favorite bits and I put it on another channel which became the final result. But as you can hear, it sounds way too spacious. It doesn't have much harmonic content. So what I did here is I added another synth pad layer. As well as another re-space. And that's basically it, but for the extra 10% I added some ambient layers, which sounds something like this. This is kind of inspired by like how people write for orchestras, like doing the voice leading, writing for different instruments and stuff. So together they're playing a chord, but in each of these ambient layers, they are actually playing a melody on its own.
I can't really dive too in depth with this because I use tons of like mu music theory stuff, so it's gonna take a lot of time for me to break everything down. But that's the basic idea. I think that's pretty much it, except like these vocal sweeps, which I talk about a lot in my other videos. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the first verse. So let's move on to the build up. So as you can hear, uh, for the instruments, it's mostly the same, uh, except I took out the ambient elements in the first half, and I added some bells underneath, and also a piano, uh, with another bell sound layer underneath. But other than that, it's just some transitional elements, like sound effects, impacts, some risers, and the build up drums. Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty much it. The only other thing I did is the high pass filter automation. It's just to take out the energy from the low frequency, so it builds up tension, it builds up, and it releases when the drop arrives. I think we should talk about the drums first. Here are the drums. So as you can hear in the drop section, there's this call and response thing happening. I'm doing the same thing in the drums as well. So if you pay attention to the percussions. As well as the entire thing in context. See, it's doing the call and response thing in the drums as well, uh, which makes it like more coherent. It also sounds less boring compared to like just copy and pasting all the percussions like like this. It creates more variety in my opinion. But yeah, uh, but for the drum pattern, it's quite simple. It's just kick and snares here. Some offbeat snares. Then it's some rides in every first and third beat. And then some crash to make every kick sound more impactful. Also added some reverse kicks. Other than that, it's just it's just those percussions that I mentioned, but that's pretty much it for the first drop. So let's dive into the source, the meat of this remix, which is um. So let's start with the bass first. It sounds something like this. Um, if I remove all these group processing, it sounds something like this. 
as you can hear it's just some serum serum base just some really basic patches i think so here it's just a saw wave being fm by a sine wave uh, with just a tube distortion which sounds like this the second layer uh it's just a saw layer white saw layer which is pretty self-explanatory in case you're wondering the, the effects and the third layer is a fm square layer yeah a square wave being fm by a sine wave um this is mainly responsible for the low mid so as you can see i also filtered out all the other frequencies um and lastly a sub it's just a sine wave with some saturation really so nothing crazy going on but together uh I grouped them and I did some group processing. I started with EQ. Uh, I talked about that quite disgusting sounding frequency over there. The next is a mess site OTT. So as you can see, uh, it's a custom rack that I made, which is inspired by Fritz in one of his videos. The basic idea is that I broke the signal into two different channels. Uh, one mid channel, one side channel using utility. Because you can pick this mid side mode here, which allows you to control the amount of mid and side content. So I just turned the mid one to 100% mid and the side channel to 100% side and put two different OTTs on it. I only use OTT on the mid and literally nothing on the sides. If I turn up the side percentage, it just becomes too wide in my opinion because I want the bases to stay in the middle of a mix. And after that is some decapitator doing some light compression and saturation. Then the saturator, just to soft clip it a little bit. Then here's the sauce, the trash too. It completely changes the sound. <laughs> um, but here I think I simply, I simply experimented with some different saturation algorithms. Uh, I also play with the curve. Wait, I didn't. I didn't play with the curve. But I simply play with different presets, and. That's actually it. And the final step is just a EQ, like lowering out some of the mid frequencies so I can leave space for the lead and the super sauce. And I also cut out the very high frequencies because I don't really want the bass to cut through a mix with those high end frequencies because it sounds really bad. I don't really like those high-end bits, so I simply removed them with an EQ. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the bass. So let's dive into the core stack. For the core stack in the first drop, there's actually only two main layers. One saw layer and one noise layer. So here's the noise. As for the saw layer, there are two serum patches in it. Uh, one that's slightly more mono with seven unison and some like distortion and effects. And the other one, it's a little bit wider and slightly more detuned as well, as you can see, with a 70% wet chorus on it. And together, the saw layer sounds like this. They aren't really doing much for the drop. Uh, they are simply here to fill out the frequency spectrum. As you can hear, the noise pretty much covered the saw entirely. 
It's just to make the bass sound a little bit more fuller. Okay, moving on to the lead. Here we got three different layers for the main lead. Here's the first one. Um, here's the second one, which is the main one, I think. And the third layer. And together, they sound like this. And um, to show you how important the processing is, let me mute all these effects. As you can hear now, it sounds really weak. Uh, but to make it stand out a little bit more, I used a bit crushing plugin. To introduce some high end frequencies, and then I filtered out the very high end bits just to prepare it for uh, the upcoming distortions. So if I turn on the distortions, now it sounds way more upfront and aggressive. Um, but if I remove this low pass filter, it sounds really harsh. So I just simply use a low pass filter so it makes it sound more controlled. But moving on, uh, we got another mid-side OTT here. And here's off. With this, Miss Audit simply uh, compresses it a little bit more so it doesn't jump up and down uh, in the room frequency bands. It sounds a little bit tighter as well. And then uh, we got two EQs in a row. This is to simply make it sound a little bit more brighter by cutting out the low mid. Nothing crazy here, but after that is some um, distortion and saturation using Camel Crusher and Decapitator. And to counteract those harsh frequencies, I used a Pro-Q3 again, and it was a dynamic band to uh, tame those harsh frequencies. And the final step is the reverb. Um, so here I did something different. As you can see, it's a pretty long reverb, but I don't really want the reverb tail to mess up the overall character of the lead. So to control the reverb tail, I use the gate after the reverb. So what happens now is that whenever Lee stops playing, it will cut off the reverb tail using the gate. Now we have a really tidy sounding lead, but at the same time we still get the, the effect from the reverb whenever the lead is playing. Okay, moving on to the second lead, um, it's playing the same melody. It has a quite different tone, um, so let's dive into it. For the first layer, uh, it's this old preset that I made myself a while ago, uh, which sounds like this. It's playing the melody an octave higher. And here's the second layer. Okay, this layer contains two different serum patches. Okay, let me see. Here's one of them. Okay, an overly detuned saw wave, which looks pretty basic, the processing. Um, for this second patch. Okay, um, there's some detuned square waves. 
Uh, okay, the big wrenching comes after this whole rack. Alright, so for the third and final layer for the second lead. It's just a basic saw lead. Uh, nothing too crazy here. As for the processing, I think it's pretty similar as well. Uh, bit crushing, some distortion. Uh, I did put a reverb here for some reason. I think it's just to make it sound more spacious in the stereo field. Miss LTT again, some EQ, and also the same trick, the gate trick, but this time I'll use it on an Echo Boy. Yeah, nothing too crazy. But here, uh, as you can hear in the lead bus, if I play everything together. You can hear this harmony going on. I actually made this harmony layer by duplicating the second lead. And I simply uh, wrote different midis on it instead of copy and pasting. But in the lead group, I also added some additional processing, apparently. Uh, wait, let me bypass all of these. With all these effects, it's, it sounds great. The sound is there, the sound design is there. But it's just not upfront enough for my taste. So I use some high shelf filter. Um, here, I did the Echo Boy trick again. And then, oh, here's the interesting one. It's a reverb swell effect. As you can see, for most of the drop, the mix is kept at 0%, so nothing's going on. But in these tiny little gaps, I brought up the mix percentage. So if it's turned off, it sounds like this. It sounds great, but it sounds a little bit empty in those gaps. But with this reverb automation, it fills out those gaps. And for this other reverb thing here, this one is more of a transitional effect. If I bypass it and play the late in context. Um, I mean it sounds fine, because uh, I'm doing the same trick on my other focal chart. If I take it out... You hear that? It just sounds really empty. Um, also, the sudden change of... Uh, energy level just make this transition really weird um, so what I did here is basically another reverb automation so it suddenly goes up to 25% all the way to 50% this creates a really long reverb tail at the end of the drop this is to just make the transition a little bit smoother and prepare everyone for uh, the second verse, telling everyone that, uh, oh, the drop is ending. Yeah, it's basically what it's doing. Um, <laughs> and for this auto filter here, it's a, uh, it's a filter automation, uh, just to take out the muddy low end created by the reverb. Nothing too crazy here, uh, just to make things sound more tidy. As for this, Rack here. Okay. I'm not sure what this is doing. Okay, this is actually doing nothing. Never mind. Um <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty much it for the lead, because it's doing the exact same thing in the second second drop. So let's move on to some filler elements. So here I got this thing here. this thing. Uh, this is actually one of the happy accidents while I was working on this project because I was trying to sound assign some filler elements. The sound that I was using sounded pretty weird so I just decided to play with like the auto boy uh, for some reason it's disabled uh, but play with the foreman. Uh, I play with the reverb level I think yeah Doing a similar thing to what I did with the lead. Let's show you the patch here. I think it's a preset firm. 
Yeah, echo sound works. If I remove all these effects, it sounds like this. Yeah, it's just a really basic sounding lead, like a flute lead. Um, okay, so let me walk you through the processing. So here, uh, I use a little older boy, automating the foreman. This somehow created a really interesting sounding uh, foreman shift. And I really like this, so I, I stick with it. Um, and then I distort it using Camel Crusher. I completely destroyed the sound. <laughs> and then I messed up OTT, make things sound tighter, brighter, as well as the EQ. And then uh, finally, it's the reverb automation. It's just to play with the stereo field, uh, which made it sound pretty interesting. And for this mute automation, I think it's just to control the control the reverb tail uh, that's coming from this preset because I uh, it has this delay and reverb turned on. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, moving on to the focal chops, which is this thing at the end of every section. This is actually a oh, it's a splice sample. Um. I think I yeah I took one bit that I liked and I time stretched it as well. But the basic idea is I I think after time stretching it, I just chopped it up and. Yeah, create this rhythmic pattern here. I also play with the foreman, but for some reason, when whenever I load this project, it just resets the automation. So it creates this really subtle foreman shift. Um. Okay. Uh, anything worth mentioning here? Not really. Uh, I think it's just the auto boy doing most of the work. So if I mute mute every effect. Yeah, if I remove these. Oh, so it's already, when it's pitch shifted, it already shifted the foreman once, but here I did some more foreman shifting using manipulator, playing with the harmonics, and a foreman. And then it's little auto boy. This one is only for the foreman shifting. Here's the actual pitch shifting. By playing with the mix knob, I managed to create a pretty interesting sounding result because now half of the signal is playing the pitch shifted version and half of the signal is playing the original signal. Um, now it sounds a little bit thicker. But after that is some Camel Crusher and Decapitator. Okay, some pretty standard distortion. A Missile OTT. Some EQ. Yeah, I use it to tame the high-end frequencies. Just to make it sound less harsh. And I end it with another filter, another another reverb automation at the end of the drop. The same thing I did for the late. Yeah, just to smooth out the transitions. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um... Oh, this this auto focal chop. Oh. Yeah, this one is amazing. Um, this is actually the original focals, I think. So if I take it out, oh, it's a still not mine part. But I uh, pitch shifted it to uh, the pitch I wanted. And I used the second, I duplicated it, I, I copy and pasted it and uh, created some harmonies with the same vocal chops. So the one below is playing some other melody. And together they sound like this. I think the, yeah, it's pretty standard pitch shifting, forming shifting. Um, nothing too crazy here. Yeah, also the reverb automation trick is pretty standard, so uh, I won't be wasting too much time on it. Also, some other filler elements here, 
we got this 808 and those little gaps in between the core stacks and the bases so if I play I solo it with a bass that's basically what it's doing like nothing too crazy here the channel is frozen right now but as you can see it's just a sound holo uh, 808 with some saturation and eq8 just to filter out the harsh frequencies in the high end because i don't really need them yeah that's pretty much it for the 808s but one final element in my first drop is this distorted lead vocal uh, this is actually from the original Foku Hulk, but in the original, uh, they have a pretty interesting structure. So, if I play the chorus right now, they have this extra two bars to prepare for the drop, um, which I don't quite prefer for this remix because. I've already built up too much tension in the build up so I just wanted to dive straight into the drop so here uh, instead of using it as a pre-drop hook I turn it into a sort of a transition between the call and response in my drops so in context it sounds something like this I also distorted it so uh, it's it's kind of a personal preference because uh, I wanted it to be distorted but also from a technical point of view it also ensures that it stands out in the mix um, yeah but here uh, the processing is actually the exact same one as the main vocal uh, the only thing different here is just I added an extra OTT and some distortion with the decapitator and yeah that's actually it yeah i also chopped it up in the mine part because i want to line it up with the focal chops it just sounded really cool that way so i just decided to do it <laughs> there's no particular reason but yeah that's the entire first drop but anyways moving on to the second first here's how it sounds As you can hear instrumental wise, it's quite similar to the first verse because most of the stuff is simply copy and pasted. For variety, I did take out some elements and introduce some new stuff. Uh, for example, the synth pad here is no longer in the second verse and I copy and pasted this bell pattern which was from the first build up and I reused it in my second verse. And I added this new piano melody. Just to create some slight variations. But instrumental wise, that's pretty much it. I also used some drums. These are completely new. So let's break this down by introducing the rhythmic parts, the hi-hats. As you can see in the MIDI clip, I did uh, play with the pitch a little bit just to keep everything interesting and then I introduced some percussions and claps then kick that's the basic idea there are also crashes at the start of the second session one thing to mention here is that uh, as you can hear the hi-hats has become more busy in the second half because i introduced a new hi-hat underneath so the mixing sound more tidy i actually pan each of them to left and right so for the first hi-hat is pan to the right for the second one is pan to the left just to make things sound more tidy in the stereo field but also just to make things sound more interesting because 
now you have different things going on for left and right which is a pretty simple but effective trick to make things sound interesting but yet that's about it for the first so let's move on to the second build up uh, which sounds something like this Um, as you can hear, it's also pretty similar to the first build-up. Uh, the main difference here is the build-up drums, as it becomes way more busier compared to the first one. Uh, we got these two new build-up drums layer. The snare has also become busier compared to the first build-up. And then... The only other new thing here is just the sidechain effect that I use on the entire instrument bus. Um, it's not really sidechain, but uh, I use the shaper box to carve out this um, sidechain shape. So it creates this pose of uh, ducking down every beat to create more movement. But other than that, it's just those like standard automations like uh, the high pass filter, an endless smile plugin, uh, just to introduce those reverb swells at the end of uh, the build up, take out those that high end energies, and yeah, that's basically it. So for the second drop, it sounds like this. Um, I'm not gonna play the whole thing here because it's just way too long um, but uh, you get the idea it sounds really similar to the first drop but it's somewhat more aggressive sounding um, so I think the main main difference here is just the uh, chord stacks so if I compare the second the one in the second drop to the one in the first drop the chord stacks in the second drop is just way more beefy yeah. but you might wonder what, what the sauce is it's just those pads that you've been hearing throughout the entire track but since it's distorted you might not recognize it if i look it up in the browser It's the exact same sample from the pads in the first. But uh, for the second layer, uh, this is something new. This is actually the first three layers being resampled into this single track, and I pitched it up an octave. This is to simply cover more of the frequency spectrum and make it sound wider and thicker. And yeah, that's. That's basically it. It's just the stored pads layer on top of Super Sauce, and that's the secret. There's nothing more to it. <laughs> um, anything new here? Um, uh, ah, yeah, this. I did add a little wind up laser sound in some of the gaps. This was not in the first drop, so it's something new in the second drop. It's just to keep the energy going. It's quite subtle actually. So that was without, and here's with. It's a quite subtle difference, but yeah, it's quite effective. For the second half, so like the final bit of the second drop, I've decided to remove all those gaps. Just have everything sustained. I just don't want the drop to be like 16 bars long. I just want to make it longer. Wait, is it 16 bars? Because I, I I just want to make the second drop a little bit longer instead of just have 8 bars of like 
hype and just ended there. So I extended the drop by reintroducing the chorus vocals. And simply have every other element uh, copy and paste it. But here they are uh, all sustained. The gaps are now all gone, except this one here. But yeah, you get the idea. Another new thing in the second half is the vocoder. I made it with focal synth, which sounds like this. It's just some standard distortion EQ. Uh, yeah, it's just to thicken everything up because nothing without it. It might sound too thin for the focal. It's something that you feel rather than listen. Yeah, once you know it's there, you can kind of notice it when it's gone. I also have this other focal layer. It's the original vocals, but uh, I put tons of reverb on it. So, all focal layers played together sound something like this. But, yeah, I think that's all for the drops. Oh. <laughs> I actually forgot the most important bit, which is that whole pitch band thing in the drop. Um, I think this is the part that made this drop work, uh, which is uh, which is this thing. This is actually made using a pitch band and also some uh, auto pan. Uh, but if I turn it off, it sounds like this. Let me show you. I actually drew these automations on the pitch band. So even these ones, like it's quite subtle, but uh, you can hear it pitched up at the start of every note. Because without these, they just sound really static. Okay, they're even playing the raw notes now. And these uh, automations on the pitch band just made it sound more human, in my opinion. It's kind of like how people band strings on, on a guitar solo. Uh, I think it's the same principle. And as for the auto pan, I simply automated two different things. One is the amount of auto pan. The second one is the rate, so it goes faster and faster. It, it's not really pan left and right, but simply it goes up and down in volume. Since the auto pan is put on a sidechain bus, every single instrument in the drop gets affected by the auto pan. So if I solo the chord stacks, it also gets affected by the auto pan. So everything goes really wobbly at that point. And this made it sound really coherent because everything is getting affected together. But yeah, that's that's the secret. Um, let's move on to the outro. Okay, um, so I mean it's pretty self-explanatory because uh, once you've listened to the first verse and the second verse you immediately realize it's just another copy and paste thing. The only different thing here I think is just this focal here. It's the original focal pitched up an octave using little auto boy. I also played with the foreman so it doesn't sound too chipmunk like. Also to make it sound dreamy, I filtered it 
three times <laughs> just to make sure the high end and the low mid doesn't cut through but yeah that's that's basically it unfortunately i didn't have time to go through the focals this time uh, but if you guys are really interested in how i process focals i could do a separate tutorial on that but let me know in the comments i just want to make sure that everyone is interested in that before i invest my time into creating these tutorials because it does take quite a lot of time in making one tutorial so do let me know if you are interested like genuinely but other than that i really hope you guys learned something from this tutorial from this breakdown leave a comment down below on what you guys want to learn next but other than that i'll see you guys next time so have fun and stay safe and peace.